If you endlessly print more money, bad things will happen. That seems to be a theme lately. Uh, it's happening right now in Turkey. But before we go any further, if you like this kind of content, make sure to press that subscribe button to let me know that I'm doing a good job of uh, reporting on this sort of content. Press that like button to also let me know that I'm doing a good job. But speaking of doing a good job, the Turkish government is uh, perhaps not doing a good job. As it turns out, they're suffering from a lot of inflation, if you have not heard. And they are right now apparently calling for uh, one of their uh, ministers. <laughs> Follow. OK, so they're calling for uh, people to sue people that, that are like letting other people know about the lira going down in value. In other words, me doing this right now, talking to you, making this video uh, could potentially open up for a lawsuit if I was, uh, you know, living in Turkey. Turkey's currency crisis uh, turned increasingly political on Thursday after a top minister urged citizens to sue economists who comment on social media about the Lyris slide. Finance Minister Nereddin Nabati's unusual remarks late Wednesday followed the banking regulator's decision to file complaints against more than 20 people including a former central bank governor, over their Twitter posts. <sighs> That's nuts. I mean, just, like, it's pretty easy for me to read that, but just think about that for a second. Think about that if that occurred uh, in the United States. You're talking about silencing people for speaking out on something that uh, affects their, their livelihood, affects their ability to put food on the table, affects their ability to provide shelter for them, you know, either themselves or, or their family as well. You're talking about messing with somebody that uh, sh has every right to know, okay, if something bad is going to occur. Like, in other words, if they have a bunch of savings built up, you're now saying we're going to punish people for, for warning them for, for warning others that your savings are going to evaporate over time. Obviously, that's wrong. I mean, I would hope that anybody listening to this right now would, would agree with me. Uh, but here's the fear, okay? Just like in other governments where this has occurred, where they start printing more and more money, okay? They've tried to lower the interest rates, if, if you read right here, okay? A, a, I don't know if this is going to help. I assume this is going to help if I blow this up a little bit. Um, yeah, you can read that a little bit better. Analysis blame the falls on Erdogan's unorthodox decision to fight inflation by orchestrating sharp interest rate cuts. The exact opposite of what countries usually do in similar circumstances. That's a lie. Okay, that is a source of misdirection provided by what I'm assuming is probably a left-leaning news source. Where does this come from? It's on Yahoo, but AFP. Is that Associated Foreign Press? Somebody leave me a comment section. Let me know if that's the case. I'm not sure what this is, or AFP. Is that what's going to lead me to? AFP. I should probably... AFP. It's coming up as it can't be reached. AFP. Okay, well, this source of news is where it's coming from. Regardless of the source of news, it seems to be um, <laughs> not condemning the government for doing this. In other words, it seems to be reporting fairly neutrally. Uh, <laughs> that they're opening up the possibility of litigation for doing this, uh, for reporting on the fact that the, the currency of Turkey, the lira, could be failing. It basically is failing. With every passing week, with every passing month, uh, citizens there are seeing double-digit increases in the cost of living, in the cost of basic you know, foods and services and rent and all kinds of stuff. This article seems to be creating a source of misdirection, uh, saying that it's the exact opposite of what countries usually do in similar circumstances is false. 
We've done that here in the United States. We have lowered interest rates almost to the point where they're basically at zero. Okay, they're hovering just above it, but when you do that, it causes inflation. And simultaneously, if you start printing more money, okay, so you hit, you basically make um, people's available interest almost zero for lending out money. Okay, so if you want to take out a loan to start a new business or something like that, maybe you've never done that before, but if you have, you know that a lower interest rate will cause you to take out more money. Okay, in that case, if you take out more money, that person that's going to charge you interest for that loan can no longer charge as much. It causes, the, the point is to cause banks to lend out more money. But if you simultaneously start to print more money, now all of a sudden you're creating more supply plus less demand. Okay, because if you reduce interest, it basically creates less demand for money. That's why if you put your money into a bank account right now, uh, you get basically zero interest because banks have zero interest in your money. They used to, you deposit some money, they would maybe do some things that would gain them some more money. If you give banks a bunch of free money, like from the government, you just print a bunch, you fabricate it, you cook the books, so to speak, maybe they're not even printing money. They're just fabricating new uh, <laughs> digital entries into, the, into their ledgers. However they're doing it, if you devalue the cost or the, the uh, if you do devalue the value of a currency by introducing more of it into a system, this is what's going to occur. And now Turkey has gone so far that they're allowing to file lawsuits. Okay, they're actually urging, this Nabadi guy is urging people to report other people if they say anything bad about the lira. You better bet your butt that that can happen here in the United States. If you think that that can't happen, all right, this is basically like seeing, <laughs> I don't know, like the dominoes fall, basically. The, these... Turkey is a pretty good example. That is not a small country. Okay, Turkey has a very large population. I don't know what is off the top of my head. It's not a small country. If you see Turkey fall, what are citizens going to rely upon? Okay, if they cannot rely upon the lira, their, their own currency. Uh, in this article, it talks about... <laughs> How they're saying, well, maybe you should invest in gold or the dollar, uh, which I think is a little humorous. I urge people to not invest in the dollar. Uh, perhaps gold. Um, there are digital alternatives now for investing that I would, I would say uh, introduce scarcity uh, in their protocols that are much better alternatives than what government fiat money is now offering to its citizens. That's a big part of the point of this video, is to just start to draw some comparisons. It's not like I have to say, well, what if this would happen to here in the United States? I don't have to wonder about that, really. I mean, <laughs> sure, maybe it's not completely apples and apples, but this is like, almost like a, comparing a granny apple to a... a a Macintosh apple, okay? They're in the same species at this point. I would say Turkey is big enough, uh, GDP is large enough to compare to the United States. If you disagree in the comments section, let me know. But if you don't think this can happen to a larger country, I think you're lying to yourself, you're telling a lie, and you shouldn't be doing that. You should be honest about this and realize that as banks, particularly central banks in countries like Turkey, like the United States, like a lot of westernized type of countries, if they continue down this path, okay, of printing more money, of reducing interest rates to near zero or completely zero, which introduces negative interest rates where you actually have to pay money to a bank to keep your money in, if you imagine that. But we're very close in the United States. Um, that can happen. Okay, and historically, 
The re another reason why I'm making these videos is that historically, countries that have allowed that to occur do not continue to be successful. As in, major things change. Uh, however, the only difference really from the past, okay, versus 2021 and 2022 moving onward is that when countries go through this, their citizens now have a choice past something like, you know, gold to hold their assets in, or perhaps, perhaps something past uh, stocks, you know, right here, where it talks about Nabadi accused the commentators of using psychological warfare by urging Turks to buy gold and dollars in order to preserve their savings against further lira declines. In other words, holding your uh, your holdings, your assets, in something that is not going to inflate. It's not going to lose value over time. They're kidding themselves if they think the dollar is going to be any source of of, of reliability over the next year or two. We're seeing, uh, I think just recently, the Federal Reserve ad admitted here in the States that we're seeing 6% interest rate, uh, excuse me, inflation rate. That's significant. Um, it's supposed to be 2%. 1.5%, somewhere around there. We're headed in this direction. And I believe that it will go further. And our government, if it continues to be left-leaning, will suggest, maybe even if it continues to, be, uh, to go back, if we see a red wave, you know, we've seen a cycle over the years, if we go back to having mostly Republicans, I think either way, People in Congress are going to try to protect the value of the dollar and not admit if it starts to fail. We do have an alternative, and it's called cryptocurrency. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to this channel and press a like button. Uh, stay tuned for more type of content like this. Let me know what you guys think about this one. I think it's fascinating, uh, and I think it's like a preview of what could come to other countries. Thanks for watching.